Prime Minister has launched an impassioned defence of the Indigenous voice to Parliament, accusing those opposing a referendum of trying to start a culture war. With the backing of each state and territory leader, Anthony Albanese insists the voice would be a modest change to the constitution. Joining me live now is the Nationals leader, uh, David Littleproud. What do you think of that? Uh, he's called out a culture war fight here. Is that true? Well... No, there's not. While the Prime Minister's working in ideology, we're working in practical reality. The practical reality of places like Alice Springs, Carnarvon in Western Australia, uh, Will Canyon, New South Wales, uh, there, where there are real issues, uh, where you need a practical response, not another layer, another layer of bureaucracy. And the Prime Minister should create an environment whereby those that have a differing view to him that come to this debate with genuine intent, as the Nationals do, and as he does. And we respect the fact that the Prime Minister comes to this debate with genuine intent to try and close the gap. But what we're saying is this is the wrong vehicle. It's another layer of bureaucracy. In fact, you look at Alice Springs and the, and the challenges that are there. There's been two uh, voices to Parliament, both Indigenous from Alice Springs, uh, that this government's ignored. So you're going to add another layer of bureaucracy. There are 227 voices, not just for Indigenous Australians, but for every Australian in this Parliament House, through Senators and House and members of the House of Representatives. Uh, they are, are the ones that give that voice. And there are plenty of consultative groups, over a thousand consultative groups of Indigenous groups. So you're going to add another one to do what? This isn't, this isn't going to shift the dial in closing the gap, unfortunately. And, you know, while I appreciate the Prime Minister's passionate plea on this, unfortunately, we're the ones, the National Party, who represent the rural and remote people that live with the consequences, that want to change, want to change uh, the consequences of Indigenous people where they're most disadvantaged. And while this might work in Redfern, I can tell you it's probably not going to do much to shift the dial in Alice Springs or Wadair or Wilcannia or Carnarvon. Hmm. Well, where's the Liberals? Where are the Liberals going to end up here? Because uh, Peter Dutton says there's not enough detail. Um, do you support that party having a conscience vote? I know you're not the leader of the Libs, you're the leader of the Nationals, yeah. but would that be a fair and reasonable path to go down? Yeah, I'm careful to give advice to another political mm. party because uh, it, it, traditionally, if anyone's given the National Party advice, we've, <laughs> yeah. told, them, we've told them to take a running jump. Yes, you have uh, So, look, this is... Uh, <laughs> so I get uh, Peter and the Liberal Party want more uh, information. The Prime Minister has made it clear from the start that there'll be a representative body, uh, a representative body that we've once had before. And that's why we're going through lived experience as the mm. Nationals and that's why we don't support it. We're going back, we're repeating history yeah. rather than uh, having an ambitious goal. And within all of this, where actually is the goal to say we've closed the gap by a set date? Where is the, the goal to say that we don't need an Indigenous voice to Parliament because all the voices of Parliament will be equal? I mean, where do we, when are we going to say that we've closed that gap? Uh, we're putting into perpetuity uh, failure. We should be saying that we should close that gap by a set date. This is the programs. There needs to be mutual responsibility in achieving that. And I get Peter wants more information and that's yeah. up to them and that's the sovereignty of the Liberal Party. But the National Party's made their decision. We want to stand firm by that. There's no malice. There's no malicious intent in what we're mm. doing. We're just the ones that live with the consequences. And I hope the Liberal Party, no matter where they get to, will respect as I respect the Prime Minister's position on this well, as well. Did, did you consider giving your party a conscience vote? Why didn't you go down that path? Well, effectively, you get one in the National Party. That's the culture of the National Party. Um, we're a little bit different to, well, to the rest G of the political Andrew G might disagree parties. there. No, well, Andrew G, as I've said before, was... That's why his decision was just bizarre, is that the conversation I had with him was that there was no, no issue with him having a differing opinion to the rest of us. Uh, and, in fact, we proved that through net zero. There were some in our party room that didn't support net zero. I did, mm. uh, and others didn't, and we respected the fact. So long as you're honest with the party room, you tell the party room that this is your position, the culture of our party is that you can have a differing view and you can go out and prosecute that so long as you show the respect to the party room, which Andrew did. And I've got to say, um, that's no, nothing's changed in the Nats and that's something we celebrate and are fierce custodians of because that brings better decision-making processes, better diversity and bigger diversity to our party room and to our democracy. OK, today you're calling on another issue for Labor to rule out scrapping the fuel tax credit scheme. Why? 
Yeah, look, this is a, a rebate given back to those that don't use the roads. Obviously, there's excise put on, on your fuel to cover roads to be built and to be maintained. Farmers and miners uh, are now jumping up and down. And they're concerned. They've obviously got intel that the government is looking to wind this back, and particularly when you see think tanks like the Grattan Institute giving the government ammunition to say, let's scrap this. Uh, let me tell you that if you do, you take away the diesel fuel rebate to farmers in particular, you're going to pay a lot more at the checkout. You already are. And it won't be natural disasters pushing up the price. It'll be labour-made disaster. Uh, and we're already seeing that because they don't have the labour they need. But if mm. you start adding this, uh, this onto it, farmers are going to have to pass that on. And you're going to get a tax on this anyway. The safeguard mechanism is going to tax... Uh, the, the last two oil refiners in this country anyway. So it's coming. You're just going to add another layer and another cost to the Australian, to the Australian farmer that they, they will have to pass on. OK, uh, David Littleproud, big week there for you in Parliament. Back for 2023. Enjoy it. We'll speak soon as always.